Hi everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and with the surprise wipe, today we're going to be talking about getting to level 10. Whether you're a new or returning player, getting to level 10 is the first step towards success in Escape from Tarkov because it unlocks the flea market, but how exactly are we supposed to do this? I played 17 PMC raids and 14 scav raids before getting there, and I had a different video planned for today, but with the surprise of the wipe, I thought that this would be more appropriate. I don't claim to be the best player of all time, but I wanted to show you the process that I go through to get to the flea market. So stick around, and let's get going. Alright, so let's go through the rough outline of what it looked like. I played 17 PMC raids and 14 scav raids, as I said. Firstly, I'll go through my progression so you can get an idea of what it looked like, and then we'll talk general tips, strategy, and weapons at the end. So firstly, you want to prioritise completing quests as they give a good block of experience. After that, killing scavs and looting gives good XP as well, as do PMCs, but you'll probably be better off only engaging players when you come across them. Don't go looking for fights, but if you get an opportunity, then feel free to take advantage of it. So let's get started by accepting both quests from Prapple and Therapist. Everybody gets a fuel now in the starting loadout, so I went and created the med station in the hideout straight away and got it starting making salewas, as you can buy all the ingredients from Therapist and you're going to need them to hand in to her for the quest. You used to have to find a fuel, but now this is super easy because you get given one right from the beginning. Next up, I jumped into customs to start on Prapple's first task to kill 5 scavs and find the two MP133 shotguns, along with looting all the industrial loot that I could, because this will be useful for the hideout, or at least making money selling stuff on the flea later when we get there. I decided to start off with the MP5, which has super low recoil, which enabled some nice fights. The value of early grenades, even just a simple flash, also can't be underestimated. People are surprised and don't expect to have them thrown at them right away, and they don't know whether they're a flash or a real grenade. Now killing scavs is fairly easy, but finding 133s is a bit more annoying. The final one that I found was on a dead guy by the campfire exit, so after being extremely careful, I insurance forwarded my own gun for it. Check every scav and you'll find them eventually. Fortunately, in that raid I killed a player with a suppressed hunter, so I took that to woods to unlock Jaeger. Next up, I went to do Operation Aquarius from Therapist, which is a dorms quest, and to pick up the truck key for checking, which is the bronze pocket watch quest, at the same time. I didn't want to risk it to try to complete them both in one raid, so the next time I went back in and finished checking as a standalone raid. Now once you've finished checking, you get to the first real hurdle, which is you need the customs office key to complete the next quest. These were not listed on the flea market at all when I was looking, so I went to reserve to try and loot some coats, but pistol PMCs had literally stripped the entire place bare, so I scrapped that idea. I was very pleased with this headshot though. The next up, I went to woods to try and get some scav kills for XP, instead using my favourite spot. I messed up the monster and scope though by not changing gas blocks, so I just tried to leave as soon as possible given that I had no rear sight. This was a bit of a failed raid. Firing up our scav again, this scav run came across a customs office key. This is the power of the scav run right here. You can find all sorts of items and you don't need to be playing a PC to find find and raid items for quests. This is very valuable. One of the harder quests early on that most people tend to struggle with, I spent 5 raids completing delivery from the past. The first one, I died to someone camping the USB spawn van on customs. Raid 2, I collected the package but then promptly died to a cheeky one tap in factory in the spawn walls in Raid 3. Back to customs for another spicy pickup in Big Red. And finally to factory in Raid 5 for another terrifying one with PMCs camping the drop zone. 
Remember, once you've dropped off the package, you don't have to redo everything if you die, but you do have to extract at some point successfully from factory to complete it in another raid. So sitting in the bathroom until closer to the end is totally legit if you don't fancy coming back in for another one. At this point we were getting super close, so the next quest up was BP Depot, which is an easy drop off of markers on customs onto fuel trucks. After this we needed one more raid for scav kills and potential PMCs, and boom we were there, open the flea market. Alright, so let's talk about some general points that I've noted over the last couple of days of getting to level 10. One of the reasons why I think the level 1 to 10 grind is so hard for less experienced players is because you're effectively playing Tarkov on hardcore mode. No flea, traders at level 1, and in a lot of ways game knowledge is most valuable at this point because you can piece together different loadouts from what you have. I tried to take in the best stuff that I had available after one or two raids of building up to 5 or 6 assault rifle level weapons in my stash, as this gave me a nice buffer to be able to lose some of them. Point 2. Everybody starts with fuel. This makes early game hideouts so much easier, you can start crafting the Solewas straight away, and if you need it for any other crafts, once you've got the workbench up, you can start making wires as well. It's actually really really nice to start with fuel and not have to go and search for it. Point 3. I never use pistols at the beginning. When I'm organising my starting stash, I take all the 9mm ammo and I sell all of the pistols and all the magazines. If things get really bad, I'll be playing scav and I'll be picking up guns that way, or buying Makarovs from Prapor and going to use it to kill a scav, or looking in a weapons crate to find a gun. Pistols are a false economy in my opinion, I sell them all immediately, you can easily use an assault rifle or an SMG, you find them all over the map on scavs, and you can use your scav runs to get them if you don't have any. Number 4, what you want to look for straight away, flash drives, gas analyzers find in raid for both of them, and they're needed for early quests. You also want to look for the customs office key, and the portable cabin key for the customs factory zone, which are needed for prep or quests. Point number 5, use your scav as much as possible, they are so useful for finding finding raid items, they can spawn with USBs, food, other items like the 133 shotguns for Prapor, the white armour or the toz for skier. All the items on your scav are finding raid as long as you leave after the first 10 minutes of the start of the actual raid instance, not when you spawn in. This is only usually a problem on factory which starts with 20 minutes on the clock, so if you spawn in at 11 minutes and leave straight away the stuff won't be finding raid, so make sure that you leave after the 10 minute marker on the extract timer. Point 6, a small one, but you get experience from healing if you don't use therapist healing service. If small amounts of money are not an issue, or you have a grizzly or something, you have plenty of heals from scab PMC raids, then do this, it'll give you a small boost over time. Point number 7, remember to utilise insurance fraud to maximise your looting, especially when it comes to body armour and rigs because they take up quite a lot of space. Hide anything that you have insured in a nearby bush to load up further from other PMCs to fill out your stash early game. Point number 8, fold down your guns in your stash, as you can't buy more at this point and so keep as many as you're able to and sell them when you get to the flea market. I have EOD stash and I've tried to keep it as organised as possible, but with a standard account you're going to have to be much more meticulous about what you keep. And you keep guns that you can actually run and are likely to be used, otherwise it's just a waste of space and you may as well keep more barter items and other flea market items and things for the hideout. Number 9, on skills. Metabolism, you can start levelling this one now, just eat and drink and raid. On strength, I'm already at level 3, so this has been made much much easier this wipe, so don't start worrying about this too much. With overweight starting at 35, and you'll level strength much more quickly than ever before when you're overweight and running around. Hopefully the throwing grenades cheesing is gone for good. Point 10, we're going to just talk about general weapons modding and what you need to be running. On weapons modding, remember that you can buy the PSO from Prapor at level 1, which fits onto Vepa Hunters, end versions of the AKs and the AK-74M. Right at the beginning of the game, the MP5 and the PP19 both have very low recoil, and I love the iron sight on the MP5. You have to hit more headshots after people start running tier 4 armour, but when most people are still on packer and the occasional tier 3 armour, you can smash up some enemy PMCs with them. The low recoil means that you'll actually win some fights at medium range due to the high recoil of the starter assault rifles because no one has modded guns yet, and you'll have half the recoil of other people. The M4 that you get as USEC is okay, as M855 ammo is decent early wipe these days after some buffs that we received about 6 months ago, but be careful with your sights. You can buy the low profile gas block from Mechanic 1 to fix the issue of the very high front post if you're using something like a 2x. Take off the carry handle and you can get a Picatinny rail to mount the red dots on. If you want one early, you can buy a Burris Fastfire and a Burris Base from Peacekeeper, so it'll also help you level up your money with Peacekeeper 2, so it's not a bad idea. M855 ammo is the same as PP on penetration for 545, both will deal with level 3 armour just fine. AKs are harder on scopes at the beginning as you only have access to the Axion from Jaeger once unlocked, which doesn't fit to any AKs that don't have a dovetail mount. 762 PS is the king of early wipe in terms of ammo, however the guns that run it have very high recoil or are the SKS, which I really don't like personally. You also can't buy magazines for the SKS or 30 rounders for the AKs early game, which makes these a little harder to run right at the start. 
I do really, really like using the AKMS at point blank if I get it on a scav loadout with two or three 30 rounders. So something like factory running a, an AK like that is really, really handy. Finally, remember that any armor greater than level three is gonna be the business early wipe. I like using level four armor and level four helmets if possible when I can, but once you get to level 10, you can legitimately buy an Alton helmet and a gen four super cheap on the flea market and run around factory like an impenetrable tank, which is actually hilarious. So give this a try if you get there quickly. If you've enjoyed the video, please do consider dropping a like and a sub. I really hope that you have a wonderful start to the wipe because this experience is so, so good. If you're starting as a new player, the beginning of the wipe is a fantastic time. If this is your wipe number two, then I wish you the best of luck because wipe number two is often the best. You're experienced enough after wipe one that you kind of know what to do, but wipe two, you're starting from the beginning and you kind of have everything laid out in your mind as to where you want to go and you really grow as a player in the second wipe. So I really hope that you all have a wonderful time because this period is one of the best periods in Tarkov. So I'll see you next time and have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.